Hey everyone, my name is Annie. Welcome to my channel, Car Stereo Chick. Today at my shop, I'm gonna be wiring up a Kenwood Exelon DNX-997XR. I'll get it set up on a test bench so we can see what it's all about, dive into all the features, and see what you guys think. So there was one feature that I wasn't able to get connected to this radio, and that is the Kenwood mirroring app, which is supposed to be for iPhones. So when you connect your iPhone to the radio, you're supposed to be able to select USB mirroring, and then the Kenwood will prompt you to download this app, which I did, and then I followed all the instructions on the app, and I'm thinking maybe this is for you know previous operating systems that it's compatible with, because I couldn't turn on the screen recording option in the iPhone to get it to work. But um, you know, I've got an email into the folks at Canwood to see if maybe that's only gonna be compatible with certain operating systems. The mirroring feature for Android, I have gotten to that, that to work for uh, clients to Android phones. Uh, typically, if you have a, like a Samsung with a smart mirror or smart view, I think it's called. I apologize, I'm not an Android user, but typically I just swipe down from the top, keep holding it, and then you'll see some other options pop up. And I believe that uh, Android calls that smart view or smart mirror. And that would allow you to completely mirror the phone on the screen, which um, I don't think is the safest thing to do anyways. You know, that's the whole point of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is to make access to the features of our phones that we love and have gotten so attached to a safer way to access it from the screen or using our voice controls like Google Voice um, or Siri. So uh, I wasn't able to try out that mirroring feature for Apple, I have a feeling it's not gonna be compatible with the current operating system, uh, but I have been able to get it to work for clients with Android. So, let's check it out. guys let's get started so I've got this unit wired up I do have the maestro disconnected for now just because it kept interrupting every time I was trying to play around with it so I will connect that later just to show you guys what the maestro can do this is kind of like the default home setting I do have an iPhone wirelessly paired up to this unit right now and Kenwood gives you a couple different home screens you can choose from you can have um, the tire pressure monitoring if you do have um, the maestro connected you've got your default time clock that's actually the one i usually leave it on my car and then you would have album art here right now something was actually playing which i thought something was playing so here let me hit play let's see there you go so there's your album art um and then if we swipe over we've got another couple widgets we can choose from a lot of information going on here and i do have um gps antenna connected but we have like a metal roof so that's going to block the signal and there's also a couple different options for background art where you can kind of upload your own image I think there was one on the first page too that i missed yeah so a couple different splash screens you can choose from really not much has changed um they've been kind of keeping that same sort of operating system and layout for the past couple of years same amount of pixels so this is that high resolution glass capacitive touchscreen but the big thing is this is a lot more vibrant than a lot of other touchscreens on the market because of um, the image saturation so this has over twice as many pixels as everybody else at uh, two million seven hundred sixty four thousand uh, pixels so super super vibrant i do have a light on so that might kind of be washing out the image a little bit but it is pretty dark in my office so wanted to have some kind of light so i can see what i'm doing and also gives you an idea of what kind of glare you might have in um, bright sun in the car now one thing i will tell you about these displays and i believe this is the only model in Kenwood's lineup that will do this is this reverse tilt option so if you do have a car like a jeep wrangler with lots of glare the top off sunroof open you can tilt that down and that can in some situations eliminate some of the glare in fact i think it helped in this demonstration right now which is pretty cool um, but just to make it easier for me to actually use the screen and show you the features i am going to pop it back to that zero alignment uh, additionally kenwood is known for the sound quality features however 
And opening this up, it does look like they limited the gold plated preamp output. They are still five volt preamp. Uh, Kenwood's still giving you their great sound quality features. So if I go into the audio menu, here's all my controls. I've got tons to play around with. This is what I love about Kenwood. And that's why I have Kenwood in my car. There's just tons of control and tons of great features. So, you know, if you're building a system in stages, this is a great venue to get into. Let's say you want to do a head unit, do a subwoofer down the road, you're going to upgrade the speakers. But for now, you got the stock speakers. You can go in here and you can tell it, you know, what cabin size you've got. You can tell it what speaker size you've got and really optimize it. Turn the crossover filter on so you can tell the interiors just play mids and highs and let your sub play all the bass. And uh, I love having that control. It really helps to get a little bit more volume and clarity out of uh, speakers that are just being powered off of a head unit. Additionally, this volume offset, this is great. If you have a vehicle that has a stock amplified system, whether it be, you know, a Bose system, like a GM or Nissan or Harman Kardon, like a Subaru, um, or even in uh, older BMWs like the E46s, this can be helpful because in those cars, even though the car has a stock amplifier, the radio is basically getting hooked up speaker level which means you're kind of amplifying an amplifier. So if you go into this volume offset menu, you can actually turn down basically the internal gain on the radio, which will help to offset and level match so that you don't have any type of background hiss. So I love having that control, that volume offset feature, or even just for odd, you know volume differences between sources, right? So you're gonna notice that when you go between Sirius XM and Bluetooth, FM and AM, and your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you will notice that there's different outputs based on your source just because of compression rates. And that volume offset will allow you to tweak that so that you don't have such a huge volume difference when you're switching between sources, if that's the kind of thing that bothers you. I pretty much just listen to music on my phone, so I don't really use that, but for other clients, super cool to have. Uh, zone control. That is cool for some vehicles. Let's say you have a um, older GM, like a 2008 Tahoe with the receipt entertainment system. You can go in here and you can put this dual zone feature on. What dual zone is going to do is allow you to use this as the slave unit. So you can load your, your DVD drive in here, output the video and the audio to the kids sitting in the back seat. So kids can listen on headphones, they can watch, this is assuming you have a monitor in the rear, they can watch the DVD playing on the rear monitor. You can control it, pause it from the front while at the same time listening to something else, another source on the head unit through the front speakers. Uh, not used in every application, but you know, there's a few cars out there where I have a client coming to replace the radio and it's got that rear seat entertainment system and they wanna have that dual zone control and it's super helpful in vehicles like that. Now, um, the EQ, Kenwood always gives you 13 van EQ, pretty much in, I think all of their touchscreen head units um, and even the singleton units, I think also have the 13 van EQ. So I love having tons of control. A lot of people, uh, they see all this, they don't really know what it is. You basically, you, you know, your lower frequencies down here, those are gonna be your bass frequencies and you got your mid range frequencies and then you got your treble frequencies, but you can really fine tune it because in a car, the, the cabin acoustics are really different. So in, you know, for example, I'll tell you um, Volkswagen Jettos. I don't know why those cars have a really harsh sound um, in like the four or five can range. It might just be due to cabin design or tweeter placement, but a car like that, bing, I can go right into my 4K, lower that a little bit, smooth things out for the client. So I typically do this by ear, but if you uh, want to, you know, be professional about it and um, if you're not the type of person that can do this sort of thing by ear, you can use an RTA with pink noise and that will show you where there's too much or too little of frequency. And then you can use this as a tool to fine tune it. So, but personally, I just do this by ear. Now, if uh, we go back out of here, some other cool audio feature controls, time alignment. This is basically so you can delay the closest speakers so they all hit you at the same time. So I remember first hearing about this and I thought, oh man, this is so cool because it's digitally pushing out the speakers that are closest to you. And the idea is when you properly set it up, like if you actually go in and delay everything by milliseconds and measure it out, 
if you close your eyes, you can't really pinpoint where the sound is coming from. And that's really kind of hard to do in a car because of phasing issues. But if you really take the time to do it right, you can get that perfect sound stage. Otherwise, there are some preset options built in. Um, but for most vehicles, I'm usually leaving it on all. But it really just it depends on the cabin size. And if I back out of here, there's a couple of other cool features that I love about Kenwood, the Supreme. Supreme is defined by Kenwood as technology to extrapolate and supplement with proprietary algorithm, the high frequency range that is cut off when encoding. So turn it on, it really makes a difference. It's not like, um, you know, like a bass boost or like a powerful EQ or anything at all like that. It just, it really helps you enhance the sound quality and every car we do i always turn that on it makes a huge difference uh loudness just so you guys know loudness is not for when you want to listen to it loud that is when you are listening to say like talk radio or news at uh, a lower volume something that's harder to hear maybe over road noise and tire noise that will boost the low and high frequencies that are harder to hear at low frequencies it's really kind of a uh, confusing label but it's just it's been in the industry forever and i don't think they'll ever change it but that does not mean when you're listening to it loud to put loudness on it's the opposite of that and in general bass boost most of the time i'm leaving that off i'm using the eq and good quality components and amplifiers to really get a good sound stage but um they do include that option and the cabin adjustments again that's one of those things where you got to try it see how it sounds in some cars i think that works great and in other cars um i don't think it sounds good so I leave it off so I'm sorry space enhancer which is basically affecting how big the sound is in the car but um it's kind of like time alignment where it's kind of pushing it out so it's one of those things we try it see how it sounds does sound good leave it off because every cabin is different all right so that's pretty much it in the audio section audio memory this is something that Kenwood has always offered I love it so that if you you know, get everything sounding perfect you can go ahead and you can actually go ahead and write that memory to the unit and then if you ever lose the settings for any reason you can just go ahead and recall those memorized settings so from um, an installer perspective and a um, shop owner i love having that feature it makes it a lot easier for me to help clients if their battery is disconnected for an extended period of time and they lose some of their settings or if they screw up some of the stuff that we did and said how do we get it back i can just go in there and tap that real quick super cool all right now let's look at some of the other options here hd radio that has always been a feature of these higher end head units so if you're in that area that does get a lot of uh, hd channels you'll have that better sound quality in your fm and am it is Sirius XM capable. It doesn't come with a Sirius XM tuner, but that's easy enough to add if that's something you're interested in. And this does have a CD DVD player, plus it has an SD card slot. So if I wanted to access that, I'm gonna hit the open button and there is my SD card slot and the CD slot. Pop that baby back up. Now, this unit um, does have multiple camera inputs. In looking through the installation guide, it does look like it will support up to four cameras, but I was a little unclear on how. I think one of them might have to be a Kenwood, oh, I didn't mean to go in there, a Kenwood specific option. Let me get back out of there. Because I wanted to go in the camera setup, that's where I wanted to go. Camera assignments. So you can assign all these different camera inputs. Most vehicles nowadays are going to come with a reverse camera. So you would assign your reverse camera. If you want to do a front camera, here's what's cool about the front camera input. It does have um, preset camera interruption for front and you can do either 15, 10 seconds, 15 seconds or 20 seconds. So when you shift from reverse to drive, that will automatically come on for whatever default time you set it to. So you don't actually have to hit the camera button to make that happen. And then uh, they will also support an additional camera. So I had like a, I think it was an HRV recently where we had to re replace up the radio and get Apple CarPlay installed. And that vehicle did have the blind spot camera uh, right under the passenger mirror and then a standard reverse camera. And having these assignable inputs made it super easy to retain those features for the client. The audio video input, so you do need an adapter for that. It's just a 3.5 
uh, with the audio and video. So the, I believe that's the three prong. And um, I don't know what you might use the audio video input for. Because if it has a DVD player, I guess if you had a rear seat entertainment system that had its own DVD player built in and you wanted to pipe the audio and video of that to the front monitor, that would be one possible use for that input. But it's always good to have options because you never know when you're gonna need them. And then Canva does always have the park guidance lines built in. You can turn that on or off and you can adjust the lines on the screen, which is nice because those default lines and aftermarket backup cameras are, you know, they're just generic. So this way you can turn, turn the guidance lines off physically on the camera and then just use the head unit to really get it tailored to your particular vehicle. Now for the navigation section on this unit, they are using Garmin, which is what Kenwood is known for. Um, this kind of drives me nuts. I have no idea why the default option for this dash is to have all this information up here. Cause you barely see the map. You get this huge bar on the bottom, then you got another one to show you what you're listening to, which I like having that. And then you have this other big one right here. It takes up a lot of real estate. So first thing I usually like to do for clients is go into the setting, go to dashboard options, scroll down, dashboards, and I change it to that one. So you can see a little bit more of the screen. And this particular model does come with five years of Invix traffic information, which um, also includes that weather widget if you want to set that up, and three years of map updates, which is really nice to have. Um, what else? What else do I have on my list here of stuff I wanted to talk about? I guess what I want to do is probably plug in the Maestro just so I can show you, you know, how that works and why you might need that. Hang on one second. All right, guys, I'm back. And I did put that reverse tilt on just to try to get rid of some of that glare for you guys. So um, one thing about these icons, so you can arrange them. I've always liked having that. So again, when a client's pick up the car, you know, I basically will tailor this based on what they're using. You can drag and drop what is going to make most sense for them. So let's say you have a newer vehicle like a 20... 14 Explorer with the Sony sync system with the older eight inch touchscreen without updated features like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's got, you know, navigation maps that are seven years old and you're looking to upgrade. The radio in a car like that, everything is kind of tied in together. So the radio is basically part of the network in the vehicle. And you need in a car like that to put in a Maestro module well, that's how I recommend doing it because that's gonna give you the best interface for re retaining OEM features. So for example, climate controls, actually that was the menu I was gonna bring up. If you adjust your climate controls in a car like that, this is the display you're gonna get. These are the options for your heated seats. If um, we needed to access vehicle information, we do have that shortcut, which I have that in my Jeep. It's just kind of a neat thing. You know, if you have basic check engine failure, you can go in here, read the code, clear it. But in cars like um, that Ford Explorer I was talking about, you really kind of need this to, to keep your, your climate control information. And um, also it will retain in certain cars, the park sensors. Um, sorry, it keeps bouncing around because of the Meister module in its little demonstration mode. The radar thing, that's cool. So you can do uh, either a K40 radar detector if you're using the ADS MRR2. I'm sorry, the ADS MRR. If you use the ADS MRR2, that one is going to be compatible with the Escort Max CI 360 so that you could get interruptions on your stereo. If you get hit, it'll let you know, you know, what speed your detector detected the threat, what speed you're at, what the local speed is. It's a really nice interface, um, especially if you like to listen to it loud. Sometimes you can't hear the uh, speaker that comes with those radio detectors is under a dash. I mean, you usually have the visual alert too, but if this will interrupt the stereo so you can actually hear it, which is, which is sweet. And, um, I think that's it. I, I'm, I always loved Kenwood. I, ever since they switched to this kind of Linux system that's running the background, I've had really, really good luck with their product. Uh, years ago, it, these things would crash like a Windows computer, but, um, 
they, they switched to, I want to say it was probably in 2016 that they switched to this kind of operating system. And every time you cycle the ignition, it clears the cache. So super, super reliable. If you ever basically have a glitch, just turn the ignition on and off and that usually resolves it. Um, and uh, I like it. I, I love Gamma. I hope you guys like this. I hope this uh, review has been helpful. I will say these are hard to get right now just because of the chip shortage. But out of all the manufacturers that I'm carrying, I think Kenwood's been doing a good job about shipping stuff. Um, Alpine, it, you know, I've got, I've got some of their, their 970s. The, some of the other models have been hard to get. But this is, uh, if you can get your hands on one of these and you need something with navigation, this is a great unit. I will review the Alpine that is available, the INEW 970 HD. That's kind of a good value unit, but that one's not gonna be Maestro compatible. So if you have one of these newer cars where you're gonna need the Maestro module to retain vehicle features, then you're definitely gonna be better off doing a Kenwood. And if you can get your hands on this one, this is a great unit, great screen, great sound quality. Um, part of their Exxon series, so it's got that two-year warranty and the higher voltage preamp. Great unit. Uh, all right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions. If there's anything I forgot to cover, I can go back and answer after the fact. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And if so, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll be back next week with more. Thanks for watching.